So you want to make your dumb house smart. This channel is all about doing just that, most importantly, on a budget. Let's get to it. Hey guys, it's Drew from Taylor Tech. This video is a very basic overview of what goes into making your house smart. I'll go into much more detail with all the components in future videos, so subscribe and ring the bell to not miss out. There are many, many different ways to automate things with today's technology. You could write your own code, build your own smart devices, wire your entire home in Cat6 and control anything you could think of. We're going to cover, in my opinion, the easiest and most user-friendly ways within reason to automate and control things. Typically, the more money you spend, the easier things are to control and use, more, more user-friendly. But since we're doing this on a budget, some things may take a little bit more DIY skills and that's what this is all about. But don't be intimidated by that. I'm going to try to help you out and work you through it as much as I can. The easiest way to, to get started is by using a hub. Right now I'm on Samsung SmartThings website, I'll get into more of that in just a second. This is the brains of the operation. Um, right here is just an example of the home monitoring kit that they offer. The, the hub communicates with everything and everything connects to it and communicates through it. it. does all the programming while everything is laid out in a relatively easy to use app. The hub I'm going to be talking about in most of my future videos is this SmartThings hub. So that's what I'll be talking about. There are others like Wink, Iris, Insteon, Harmony, Amazon. They have their all proprietary devices. This one you can connect a lot of those other ones to and it's uh, very open source. And The reason I think SmartThings is the best is because it allows users to create their own smart apps, they call it, and device handlers within the app itself to control new or otherwise unsupported devices. This is not something I delve into as far as creating smart apps and device handlers, but the SmartThings community is great. The user developers that create these things they share these apps with everyone, so it's not an issue. Now, the way these things communicate through the hub, these being the smart devices here, just a few examples, are through through three different protocols: Z-Wave, Zigbee, or Wi-Fi. Zigbee is a privately owned and a bit older, but still works great method. Z-Wave is newer and more reliable. They also have a Z-Wave 2 that came out a couple years ago. That's even better. Z-Wave is also open source so companies can use the technology freely. They both use a mesh device to device network so the signal bounces off one to the next to the next in case it's too far away from your hub. Let's say you put the, your first device that you ever get on the further side of your home and um, your hub can't reach it for whatever reason. Put another device in between them, the signal will bounce from one to the next until the signal is reached. This wouldn't be an issue um, unless you have a massive house, just using this as an example. I believe they have a 200 meter signal strength uninterrupted without any blockages, so that's pretty good range, but I've never had an issue with range. Just give you an example. So in theory, you could set a line of these up a mile long to communicate with your hub, the furthest one being a mile long, the, pro the devices will bounce from one to the next and eventually reach the last one and send the signal right back to you. Uh, these protocols, Zigbee, Z-Wave, are what are used in most wireless security systems. The devices, the smart devices, can have any one of these protocols to work, including Wi-Fi, which I mentioned before. Um, Wi-Fi can be used for different things like thermostats, like I have a Nest thermostat, cameras, Wi-Fi cameras, uh, or many other different things also. A few examples of devices are light bulbs, which you see here, light switches, outlets, garage door openers, uh, the list goes on and on, and they could be controlled by all kinds of different things like motion sensors, contact sensors, presence, your phone's presence, so therefore usually your presence, time of day, sunset, sunrise, etc, etc. So it's really that simple. A smart home used to be a kind of a sci-fi thing, but now it's really a thing now, and it's it's really quite simple the way these companies have made it. It's pretty inexpensive compared to at least what I used to think too. So all you need to get started is a hub and a device and a smartphone. 
that's really it. So the hub, you kind of have to jump into that, but these retail for $99. I'm going to show you something in a second here. And then you also need a device. The device can cost as little as $5. So if you want to have a smart home, $105, you know, and you're set. That's really all it is anymore. So I want to jump over to Amazon real quick. So here's the SmartThings Hub second gen in Amazon, $99. <clears throat> but I'm going to show you what I always do when I shop on Amazon. Go down here to this used and new, right here, used and new section. Click on that. Now click over here, Prime, and this will bring up Amazon warehouse deals. You can see over here in the seller information. Um, these all say used, very good, used like new. And these are new over here, but like this one here, used like new, returned by last customer within two days. That's usually someone got the wrong thing, or item will come repackaged. Usually, this doesn't even mean that it was used at all. It just means that it was the package was damaged, and um, and they had to repackage it or something like that, or it'll tell you exactly what's wrong with it less than quarter by quarter cosmetic imperfection. That doesn't matter on these things. They also have the full return policy on these items too. And you, as you can see these are only $84. So you're saving 15 bucks right off the bat. This isn't just for the SmartThings Hub. This is anything on Amazon as long as they offer it. So yeah, uh, save you a couple bucks just with that. So yeah guys, that's it. Make sure you subscribe so you can see future videos and uh, I'll delve into a lot more detail on all these different devices. Uh, real quick, SmartThings has their own devices. You don't have to get SmartThings devices because these are expensive. I'm just giving you examples. Multi-purpose sensor. This is it. You can put on a door or window. It also has a gyroscope inside, three axes, so you can do different things with that. Motion sensor, arrival sensor. You can put on your keychain. More open-close sensors. Water leak sensor. You can put anywhere you, you're afraid of water link motion motion contact contact motion cameras you get the idea there's a lot of different things you can add yeah guys make sure you subscribe ring the bell a lot more videos will be coming out soon with details about different devices including those five dollar smart outlets see you guys in the next one